all right, just wanted to do a video refuting this charismatic false doctrine that miracles produce faith and show from scripture that no, in fact, the saint is a walk by faith, not by sight. Because this charismatic movement is all about walking by sight, essentially. They're demanding signs and wonders, just like the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 16, verse 1 to 4, and Matthew chapter 12, verses, I believe it was 38 down to verse 41. These charismatic movement are indeed modern day Pharisees in how they constantly want signs and wonders instead of walking by faith. But here is scriptural, a scriptural refutation of this false doctrine by the charismatics and Pentecostals that miracles are, that are what produces faith. First of all, most of those who saw God's miracles upon Egypt and during the wilderness wanderings did not believe. Okay, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 to 12. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their hearts, and they have and they have not known my ways. I, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So notice how they were for 40 years seeing God do miracles and signs and wonders, and yet they still would not believe and hearken to him. And God was angry with that generation. It seems like those miracles weren't producing a very good faith in that, in that generation, even after 40 years of seeing that, four decades. You know, someone was born and they'd be in their 40s and still would be seeing those miracles and not believing. But anyway, next point is that here's also a really strong refutation of that. Many of those who witnessed Jesus Christ's incomparable miracles also did not believe. Okay. John chapter 12, verse 37 to 38. John chapter 12, verse 37 to 38. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Elias the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? So he's doing all these miracles in front of them, and, and yet they would not believe. i also like to point out, too, that in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus literally heals the servant's ears right in front of the Roman soldiers. They see him do that, and yet they still arrest him. They still don't believe. So, once again, we see that miracles are not producing faith. Matthew chapter 11, verses 20 down to verse 24. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 down to verse 24. Then began he to abrade the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Shorazin, oh, saying that right, woe unto thee, Bathsheba, for, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre or Sidon, Sidon uh, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and, ash, in, in sackcloth and ashes. Sorry about that. Uh, but I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell, for if the mighty works which have been done in thee, had have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. So he's doing all these miracles and mighty works in, in their presence, and yet they would not believe, and he's going on to rebuke them in this passage here. Also, I'd like to point out, too, this also refutes Calvinism as well, because if man has no free will, then Jesus Christ would have no reason to upbraid them for not repenting. He's holding them accountable for not repenting. But if you have no free will, then... It would they, there would be no reason for him to upbraid them for not repenting because they would have had no ability to do otherwise. So this also refutes both the charismatic movement and Calvinism. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 down to verse 24. It's one of the bit of a side note I want to point out there. Next point is that the Holy Scriptures are sufficient for Christian faith and practice, not signs and wonders. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 down to verse 21. And this verse just demolishes the entire charismatic Pentecostal false uh, lying signs and wonders and false miracles. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16 down to verse 21. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he, re he received from, from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him, when we were with him in the holy mount. We, uh, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do, you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 
Notice something very interesting, how in verse 16 and 18, they talk about the, tra the transfiguration and hearing the voice of God the Father speaking to the Son uh, from heaven. And yet he goes on to say in verse 19, but we have a more sure word of prophecy, even more so. Basically, he's contrasting that with the voices from heaven. We have a more sure word of prophecy, even more so than voices from heaven. What's that? The word of God. The word of God is all you need. You don't need voices from heaven. You don't need signs and wonders. Everything you need is in the word of God. The word of God is the, the two-edged sword that's, put, that's quick and powerful. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God is what's able to make you wise into salvation and is sufficient for matters of doctrine and faith and practice. Okay? Paraphrasing, of course, from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. The word of God is that which is perfect. It talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. That's all you need. Okay, And here... He's explained that, that we that's even more so than signs and wonders. It's our more sure word of prophecy. But the charismatic movement is just like the Catholic Church. They will not go by scripture alone. They want to have their signs and wonders and walk by sight, not by faith. Even though we're supposed to walk by faith according to Second Corinthians uh, Second Corinthians chapter five verse seven and Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen, and many other scriptures too. So don't be deceived by this charismatic Pentecostal movement. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.